안녕하세요 여러분 예, 오늘은 코로나 사태로 인해서 1년 동안 연기되었었던 베니스 비엔날레 그리고 마침내 올해 개막하게 되었습니다 베니스 비엔날레의 그 한국 간의 올해의 프로그램의 주제인 미래 학교와 연관되어 있는 첫 번째 담론 프로그램 가운데 일부로서 생성 대화의 한 켠을 이루고 있는 해방적 학교의 고고학의 첫, 의, 세, 세 번에 이어지고 있는 강연 프로그램으로 진행이 될 텐데요. 오늘은 그첫 번째 프로그램을 진행하고자 합니다. 해방적 학교의 고고학은 미래 학교라고 하는 제명으로 진행되고 있는 우리 프로그램과는 조금 엉뚱한 과거의 학교의 사례들을 찾고자 합니다. 신자유주의 도래와 더불어서 사실상 우리는 교육이 붕괴되었다는 말을 곧잘 듣고 납니다. 학교라고 불리우는 것은 이른바 인적 자본이라는 것을 통해 자기 자신을 관리하고 자기 자신의 개선을 도모해서 시장에서 성공을 고도해야 한다는 반교육적인 이데올로기에 의해 점령되어 버린 지 오래입니다. 배움이라는 것은 무엇일까? 그리고 학교라고 일컬어지는 장소는 무엇일까? 그리고 현재의 교육으로부터 벗어날 수 있는 새로운 학교의 모델, 새로운 배움의 모델을 찾는다면 그것은 어디에서 발견될 수 있을까? 저희들은 그와 같은 질문을 던지면서 유토피아적인 충동으로 가득 차 있었던 과거의 교육적 실천의 사례를 찾아보고자 합니다. 오늘은 그첫 번째 프로그램으로 예, 겐다이시조사라고 알려져 있는 현대사조사라고 하는 출판사에서 몇년 동안 운영했었던 예, 미학교, 즉 비카코라고 하는 사례에 관련된 연구로 어, 함께 오늘 요시코 시마자 선생님을 모시고자 합니다. 요시코 시마자 선생님이 소개해 주실 예, 미학교, 즉 비가코는 모더니즘적인 제도화되어 있는 예술 교육에 대한 큰 저항을 느끼고 더불어서 1968년을 전으로 하여 급진화되어 있었던 여러 유토피아적인 중동이 예, 실패로 종결되게 되었을 때 어, 단순히 정책인 제도를 변혁하고 경제적인 질서를 예, 바꾸는 것이 아니라 우리가 가지고 있는 삶의 감각과 느낌, 사고의 방식을 비롯한 삶의 형태 전체를 바꾸는 새로운 예술 교육을 모색했다는 점에서 매우 흥미로운 사례라고 할수 있을 것 같습니다. 네, 요시코 시마자 선생님에 관해서 간략하게 여러분들에게 소개를 해드리고자 합니다. 요시코 시마자 선생님께서는 현재 일본 도쿄대 예술 및 과학부에서 1960년대와 70년대에 걸친 일본 미술과 정치의 관계에 관해 강의를 하고 계시는 학자이시면서 또한 작가이자 또한 액티비스트이기도 하십니다. 그녀는 일본에 가장 두드러져 있는 페미니스트 및 반전 예술관으로 알려져 왔습니다. 요시코 선생님의 작품들은 뉴욕 공공도서관, 도쿄 메트로폴리탄 사진박물관, KO 대학교 예술센터 등에 소장되어 있기도 하고요. 2002년에는 광주 비엔날레에 참여하기도 하셨습니다. 요시코 선생님께서 오늘 강의에서 소개할 미학교, 즉 비카코에 관련되어 있는 전시의 기획으로 2013년부터 4년간 존 헤서드 갤러리, 갤러리에서 열린 엔티 아카데미라고 하는 전시에 참여하는 것을 비롯해서 아츠코바루 미술관에서 나카지마 요시오 신드롬 그리고 2017년 오타 미술관에서 열반에서 파국까지와 같은 전시의 큐레이터로 참여하시기도 하셨습니다. 한편 요시코 선생님께서는 2012년 영국 런던의 일본 대사관 밖에서 퍼포먼스를 통해 억압되고 침묵당했었던 일본 위안부 여성들의 역사에 대한 관심을 촉구하는 일본 위안부 여성 동상색이라고 하는 퍼포먼스를 기록한 비디오 작업을 제작하기도 하셨습니다. 요시코 선생님께서는 1960년대부터 70년대에 걸친 일본의 안보 투쟁에서 전공투 그리고 그 이후에 일본 급진운동의 성세를 소개하는 일본의 붉은 연대라고 하는 레드 이어즈라고 하는 책이 지난해 영국의 버서 출판사에서 출간이 되었는데요. 오늘 강연의 그 중요한 내용이 될 1960년대 예술과 정치의 조류, 겐다이 시조사에 관하여라고 하는 에세이를 기부하기도 하셨습니다. 자, 그럼 오늘 요시코 시마자 선생님을 모시고 비카고의 사례에 관한 이야기를 청해 듣도록 하겠습니다. Well, thank you very much for your introduction, and it's my pleasure to talk about b i g a k o um, So, can I just go to uh, share my PowerPoint? Um, okay. So, um, yeah, that's I'm going to talk about Gendai Shosha b i g a k o So, Gendai Shosha b i g a k o was an alternative art school founded by a radical publishing company in 1969 in Tokyo. In the aftermath of the student movement, uh, so it opened its pilot program in February 1969, 
shortly after the occupation of Yasuda Lecture Hall of Tokyo University by Zen Kyoto students was uh, crushed by armed riot police. Zen Kyoto is an abbreviation of Zengaku Kyoto Kaigi or Campus Joint Student Struggle League. Uh, it's a non sectarian radical student organization. So the Gendai Shosha Bigako, well, after I will, I will just call it Bigako, was founded by a, the director of the publishing company, Ishi Kyoji. Uh, and the Gendai Shosha, with its publication of Trotsky and Rosa Luxemburg, was often considered as an opinion leader or ideological vanguard of the Zen Kyoto movement. And indeed, many radical students were ardent readers of Gendai Shosha books. However, she insisted that they never published uh, books catering solely to the radical students. Unlike other left-wing publishers, Gendai Shosha's catalog did not consist exclusively of political theory. Its first publication was Problem Actual Du Marxism by Henri Lefebvre and Marquis de Sade's Eugene, translated by Shibusawa Tatsuhiko. So Lefebvre, de Sade, and André Bouton were the main pillars of the early days of Gendai Shosha. Ishii regarded these books as an attempt to destroy both Stalinist communism and the modernist intellectuals using imagination as a weapon. In 1959, Ishii published Shibusawa's uh, translation of this Sad's Juliet, which was promptly banned as pornographic by a Japanese court. Ishii and Shibusawa were ultimately found guilty, but this case put Gendai Shosha in the spotlight. Students and intellectuals who are dissatisfied with increasingly conservative and shallow political and culture situation enthusiastically embraced the appearance of this new radical publishing company. And after 1967, the company published more art related books, such as here, Nakamura Hiroshi's monograph, Boen Kyo Kara no Kokuji, announcement from a telescope. And on the right hand side, Kara Juro. Karajuro is a director of the Red Tent Theater. Uh, his first collection of play and essays, Koshimaki Osen. Uh, they are both published in 1968. And on the left hand side, Hosoe Eiko's famous photo book titled Kamaitachi on the Buto dancer, founder of Buto, uh, Hijikata Tatsumi, in 1969. So the anti-modern, primeval, and sometimes grotesque uh, expression was an antithesis to the, the mainstream of art, theater, and dance. And they gained support in the underground counterculture scene. When Bigako started in 1969, the student movement was already in decline. Saishu Satoru, uh, Tokyo University Zen Kyoto leader uh, wrote, after Tokyo University Yasuda Hall occupation had fallen, we suddenly felt like we were in an air pocket. We felt there was no use in thinking of the future of the world. We could not create anything new and were to drop out and eradicate ourselves. At the same time, technology, business, and bureaucracy were running like a machine and bringing about a world in which we had no role anymore. Ishii was a keen observer of the time, seeing the stagnation of the political thought and activism, he found possibilities in art and education. She tried anew the idea of nurturing autonomous mind, this time not with political theory and, and lectures, but with art and physical work. 
中村博士 an artist and one of the teachers of Bigakko said, I think she tried to challenge the post 68 situation by reintroducing art as a tool for quiet reflection on the internal and for changes from within. From the beginning, I think she considered Bigakko not just as an institution for art, but also as a movement where political and artistic activism thoughts and philosophy were discussed, practiced, and realized. He even compared it to the Renaissance when the visual images radically changed the perception of the world itself. At the time when everything seems to be sliding down into the bottomless void, we at Bigako dare to dig our heels in to stop and think inwardly. A radical uh, publishing company was starting an art school. So it was uh, the major event for the young uh, readers of Gendai Shosha books. So this is a Bigako poster, the first year poster, the right hand say Bigako. Bigako literally means be, um, beauty and gakko, school. But um, Gakko was by 1969 uh, an almost despised term. For in the era of student revolt, uh, schools were to be destroyed. Uh, but Bigakko dared to call itself Gakko, even though it was not even a government certified school. It never was. And unlike all but a very few schools in Japan then or now, Bigako had neither eligibility requirements nor an entrance examination for those who wish to enroll. The number of students was limited to 250, about 15 to 20 students per class. It intend to bring back the idea, anachronistic to many eyes, of a school as a place of direct intense interaction between teachers and students. In the 1969 inaugural brochure, uh, Kihon Linen basic principles was set out. We position Bigako as the best device to comprehensively intervene in contemporary aesthetics and ethics. The Bigako's curriculum is primarily concerned with tewaza, handwork skills or crafts and training through a close relationship between teachers and students. Students are to acquire teachers' aesthetic ideas. Therefore, if we find no appropriate teacher, there will be no class. Inako opened in February 1969 with a workshop in painting by Nakamura Hiroshi and by Nakanishi Natsuyuki in drawing, with 15 students in each class. In September of that year, uh, Bigako opened other technical workshops, uh, design, wood carving, mask making, miniature drawing, uh, copying of classic artworks, perspective drawing, and pen drawing. In April 1970, Bigako relocated to its current premises in Jinbocho district in Tokyo and added two more technical workshops, Okabe uh, Tokuzo's silk screen printing and Kano Mitsuo's uh, etching classes. Also added was an art workshop, artist workshop uh, taught by three teachers in rotation, Akasegawa Genpei, Hikuhata Mokuma, and Matsuzawa Yutaka. As uh, this is a picture of the Jinbocho uh, class. Uh, it was, it's located in on the one floor, third floor of this old, old building. And as there was only one large room for all these workshops, each was held once a week from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
the classroom floor was covered with 80 tatami mats, straw mats. And uh, the space, which is approximately 115 uh, square meters, could be divided with black and white curtains. And both students and teachers sat or lay on the floor using boxes designed by Nakanishi and Nakamura as workbenches, as you can see in this photograph. And in addition to these workshops, uh, there are morning lectures by scholars and writers whose books were published by Gendai Shosha. Um, this is uh, the lecture scene by Tanemura Suehiro. And uh, the list of lectures given in the, the, the first few years included um, Shibusawa Tatsuhiko uh, on Eros Civilization and the End of the World. Tanemura, uh, he was a lecturer of German symbolism. He lectured on Manalism and Alchemy. And uh, uh, Kara Juro, the playwright and director of, of Situation Theater, um, Kadensho of No. And that uh, Hijikata Tatsumi, is a Buto dancer on the body. Akiyama Kiyoshi, an artist poet about poetry and that uh, post World War I avant garde art. And uh, here also some later, Iwaya Kunio uh, lectured on surrealism and Matsuyama Shintaro, Shuntaro on Indian uh, symbolism. So these eclectic collection of the subject ranging from alchemy to anarchist poetry represent their interest in learning heterodox uh, thoughts as an alternative to the academic education. And one of the key concepts of Bigako was its emphasis on te waza, te as in hand, and waza as a skill or craft. Although this may appear rather an outdated idea, it was precisely what was missing in Japanese art academies. An artist who attended the National Academy in Tokyo in the late 1950s to early 60s recalled almost non-education she received there. She stated that the vigorous technical training, close communication with professors who were practicing artists, and theoretical discussion were all missing from the art academy. And here in this slice, this is Teita um, exercise sample of wood carving, which used to be taught at the National Academy, but then by um, 60 something, uh, I think by mid 60s, they, they discontinue doing this kind of exercise in the academy. And, but then the teacher who was teaching uh, at Bigako, he reintroduced this data. So these are, are the samples that uh, are done by Bigako students. But Bigako was not just supplementing what was lacking at the academy. What Bigako aimed for with uh, their insistence on Tewaza was to consciously go against the modernist current in search of the radicals in the world original sense of root. And that the primeval energy from which revolutionary creation could be born. What Ishi saw in Tewaza was not merely uh, the pursuit of good artisan skills, rather he thought of it as a tool for acquiring embodiment, the understanding and realization of ideas through vigorous disciplined physical experience. Takahiko Okada, an uh, art critic who visited the first year class of Bigako, noted there was a sense of ethics in the attitude toward art. He wrote, their concern with ethics is what differentiates Bigako from other art institutions. This attitude is an un antithesis to the current mainstream art education and modernism. This ethical attitude, however, is alien to the reinforcement of a certain ide ideology. 
Igako's uh, conception and operation definitely do not endorse such a fallacy. Besides, rigorous technical training itself, which is conducted in order to create imagination through close experience with materials, leaves no room for such delusions. Their emphasis on the universality of handwork skills may remind some of Bauhaus, but atmosphere of Bigako reminds me of the arts and crafts movement of William Morris. Not in the superficial similarity, but in their attitude. Morris' idea was not just making good products, but changing the society through development of art that was an expression of the pleasure of labor. And how the concept of tewaza should be interpreted and realized in practice was up to each teacher. Uh, the artists who had atelier classes uh, came up with their own unique curriculum. The Gakko administration did not choose teachers who suited the idea of tewaza or try to force it as a fixed methodology, but chose the teachers who could bring in interesting interpretation of it. And these different elements were to collide and generate energy and intensity. Another key concept was a close and intense teacher-student relationship. It might resemble the traditional relationship of master and apprentice, but unlike the rigid hierarchy of artisan training, the teacher-student role at Bigako, but sometimes interchangeable. Akasegawa Genpei called himself senseito, a self-coined label derived from sensei, teacher, and seito, student, as he learned just as much from his students. The most important criterion in choosing the teachers at, Big at Bigako was that they be able to lay bare to the students everything of themselves and their art making. Teachers were not to dispense measured doors of pre-existing knowledge, but to, as it were, expose themselves. So let me talk about each class. Um, the first is Nakamura class. Uh, this is Nakamura Hiroshi, born in 1932. He's still alive. Um, he's almost only surviving teachers of Bigakko now. He's artist known for his paintings, um, such as this, uh, dealing with social issues. Uh, this one, Tsunagawa Goban, deals with the expansion, uh, the people's struggle against the expansion of um, American base in Sunagawa, Tokyo in 1950s. So in Nakamura Hiroshi's painting workshop, he adopted obsolete classical oil painting technique, such as Grisai, Chiaroscuro, uh, and Sfumato. This may seem retrogressive or merely academic to the Western mind, but Nakamura's intention was to use Western classical technique as antithesis, an antithetical to the modernism that dominated Japanese art academies. Nakamura claimed that, that since Western art was introduced in Japan in the 1870s, the Japanese had always loved the expressionistic and uh, impressionistic and expressionistic paintings in which artists poured out their inner sentiment with strokes, texture, and atmos atmospheric colors. And without strong realist tradition at the core, as there was in Europe, Japanese modern art had nothing to either build on or level against, only shifting from one style to another. Nakamura was not trying to establish that tradition single-handedly at Bigako, but he was trying to give the student there a structure. 
In his class, he tried to revitalize the tradition of realism with contemporary themes. And uh, one of the first exercise for Nakamura's student at Bigako was to uh, copy a black and white photograph of Mona Lisa. Nakamura explained uh, the method as follows. Students who had never drawn before have this fear. In order to get rid of it, I made them copy the Mona Lisa in pencil. The most important thing was to start from the details, which was opposite to what they taught at the art academies. Uh, in academies, they taught uh, starting with rough outline and then go to details. But at, the, at the, his class, the students were to start with the right eye of Mona Lisa with minuscule lines. As the copy was quite small, if they were very careful and they couldn't make too many misjudgments. To make them extremely careful, uh, I made them use 2H, 2H is very hard pencil, and have them sharpen so that the two centimeter of the lead was exposed with extremely sharp end. If you use too much pressure, the, the lead would break. Uh, but if too little, you couldn't leave any mark. They had to learn the right pressure by trial and, and error. Then they had to figure out the distance from right eye to the left eye using the size of right eye as uh, the standard then to the nose, mouth, contour of the face, hair, down to the, the chest and hands, then to the background. With so many restrictions, they really had to concentrate and the result was surprisingly good. It didn't matter if they had skills or not, only the level of concentration mattered. After this, seeing they could actually draw, they shed their fear of drawing. And this is a sample of one of the students who almost completed the Mona Lisa, uh, who had no previous art education, but the result was quite astonishing. And uh, mo uh, quite lots of, uh, of his students, uh, probably more than half, didn't have any uh, formal art education before. So this and then this another, uh, the first year atelier class was Nakanishi Natsuyuki drawing class uh, titled Rotating Portrait Project. Nakanishi Natsuyuki, uh, he's perhaps uh, best known as the center, Naka, of the High Red Center uh, performance group in the 1960s. Uh, he had the, his drawing class uh, was focused on portrait, but it was far from the standard academic idea of the genre. At the time, Nakanishi was collaborating with Buto dancer Hijikata Tatsumi. Uh, this is Hijikata's Revolt of the Body in 1968, for which Nakanishi did the stage design. He designed that the metal sheet, hanging metal sheet, and the, the, the chicken from the ceiling. Um, and this experience made him think that an artist as a teacher was akin to choreographer or theater director. Nakanishi's class was based on carefully planned week by week exercise that came with detailed instructions. Although it was a portrait drawing class, each class started with some performative exercise to experience the space and each other's uh, bodily presence within it. So Nakanishi's class had 15 students who were divided into five groups with three members each. Each group member was to make portrait of others as well as a self-portrait. Altogether, one group was to produce nine portrait group, uh, drawings of the human face. But before they started drawing, they were to do exercise 
to examine the definition of phase, what phase was and where it start and where it ended. So uh, one exercise was for two students to face each other and put the finger into each other's mouth to feel the inner contour of the mouth and determine if where the face, if that's a face still, or where the face end and where the inside of the, the mouth start. And another exercise was uh, uh, drinking milk and feel that the flow of that the milk from mouth to throat, and you can can you can you physically decide where that the, the face ends and throat starts. So these exercises are planned to painstakingly erase the pre-existing notion of space, face, images, drawing, etc. In other words, uh, these are exercises to question and confirm the world around yourself with a new eye. Nakanishi said that for him, the most important aspect of the curriculum was how he, who once denied painting, could restore painting. He said the exercise in the curriculum might resemble performance, but they are parts of the process of making a painting emerge. And he intended the class to be an exercise of painting theory. Perhaps not all the students understood it, and one complained that he was used to be a part of Nakanishi's art project. But Bingako manager Kawani said, our intention was to make the second and third Nakanishi and Nakamura. Only after totally submerge yourself in their artistic theory you might be able to find your own practice, or you might never be able to resurface from the experience. Indeed, one ex-student recalled that these exercise, sometimes he, something he had never experienced before, opened his eyes to think anew about what art was, but at the same time, he was totally lost and could not escape from Nakanishi's influence for a long time. And these uh, couple drawings are done by uh, his students at that time. And another class was Akasega Genpei, uh, Picture and Letters. Akasega was also a member of High Red Center. He was a red Aka of the High Red Center. And he is known for uh, getting arrested for making artworks resembling 1,000 yen bill. He later um, created real zero yen uh, banknote. And he sold this for a few hundred yen. Uh, his plan was to eventually replace all that money in Japan, all the yen with a zero yen. So he was very interested in, in the, the money at this time. Um, especially after the Wantada Yen trial, Akasengo's interest shifted from uh, painting to printed matter. Uh, perhaps this came about through the experience of determining the degree of realness and falseness of the printed banknote during the trial. As soon as something is printed, it seems to gain greater reality or authenticity, as well as approval by authority. At Bigako, he uh, instructed the student to draw a 1,000 yen note from memory. He didn't expect them to be able to draw it in detail, but their finished drawing fell drastically short of his expectation. Uh, they are nothing like real 1,000 yen note. One student could only write 1,000 yen in the middle of the, bank uh, the, the blank rectangle. So these are uh, later reprinted in uh, the Biju Techo magazine. Some of these are uh, done by artists and some are by students, but none of them just 
you know, you see 1,000 yen bill every day, but then they just you know, thought that they could not uh, draw them from, from the memory. Um, Kimura Takeshisa, a graphic designer who also taught at Bigako, uh, argued that uh, paper currency was symbolization of the state and the design of the banknote with its intricate ge geometric pattern to discourage counterfeit and with juxtaposition of various images to abstract the state function to inactivate people's imagination of the state. Just as the gold standard system was based on the prohibition of imagining anything more valuable, the design of banknote was the artificial model of the state system that prohibits any free imagination. There was no set of curriculum in Akasegawa's class. Uh, Akasegawa showed and talked about what he had done and what he was interested in, such as the Haide Center events and 1000 yen case. He also taught lettering technique. The lettering exercise was to forcibly make the student look at words with a fixed gaze rather than a glance in order to make them imagine the hidden meanings beyond the, the appearance. As Akasegawa said, after all, the only way to teach was not by giving instruction, but by showing students the raw materials they might otherwise not take a good look at. And then another uh, class was Kikuhata Mokuma class, uh, Yamamoto Sakubei copy mural paintings. This Kikuhata Mokuma was uh, one of the younger members of Kyushu Ha, an anti art artist group in Kyushu in 1950s and 60s. This was his best known uh, work. Slave Genealogy, 1961. But his art workshop class description was very unique. It was, uh, the class was held in 1970. It states, this class aimed to produce a large scale mural based on about 400 pieces from over a thousand artworks by Yamamoto Sakubei, an elderly former miner who had been painting his life as a coal miner in Chikuho coal mine, altering the hardship into creative energy. Through this project, young people in their 20s will re experience the history of Chikuho coal mine, a former stepping stone of the development of modern capitalism in Japan. Throughout the Meiji, Taisho, and Showa eras, this exercise is to indicate the location of artistic theory in the future. We will focus our study on how Yamamoto's works in the absence of academism and its dogmas possesses the element of protest against the state of contemporary art now. Yamamoto Sakubei had no formal art training at all, but Kikuhata saw something extraordinary in his drawings that transcend academic technique. Kuhata talked about Sakubei's te hand in an interview. He said, a hand that had a pickaxe was now holding a paintbrush and painting a scene of him holding a pickaxe. Sakubei said he could not paint well, but he has something so much bigger and deeper his paintings are pregnant with universality. The value of these paintings lie in their lack of technique in an ordinary sense. Kikuhata informed the students that the only way to fully understand the value of uh, Yamamoto Sakubei's art was to trace his creative process step by step with their own hands. The student went through this painstaking process for the whole year 
and produced nine large oil paintings that incorporated over 400 of Sakube drawings. Most of the students had never used oil painting before, and Kikuhata had to teach the technique from scratch. They were to copy the drawings in oil on nine uh, 200 go, 200 go, that is about uh, 260 by uh, 200 square uh, centimeter canvases. After the composition of the paintings was determined, with color photographs on uh, of the drawing in one hand, student copied the out outlines to twice the scale on the canvas. Then they color them in again with the color photographs in hand. So these are some some scenes of them paintings, uh, nine paint um, oil paintings. And this is uh, the, the one of the nine paintings completed one. When the paintings are completed, they had the like, exhibition in the, the Yotsuya Gallery and they invited Yamamoto Sakube from Kyushu. Yamamoto came, sat in the middle of the students, surrounded by the large paintings, drank and sang coal miner songs together with the students. The paintings are now in uh, the collection of Tagawa City Library in Kyushu, where he came from. And the Yamamoto Sakube's coal mine drawings were designated as a memory of the world by UNESCO in May 210. So now they see people see the value of Yamamoto's drawings, but at this time in 1970, nobody except uh, Kuhata and very few other people uh, find anything in, valuable in Yamamoto's drawings. And then another class, Matsuzawa Yutaka's final art thought. Matsuzawa in this photograph is uh, the, the one on the left hand side. Uh, this workshop has absolutely nothing to do with Tewaza because Matsuzawa, he was considered a founding father of Japanese conceptual art, stopped making art objects of any kind in 1964. Since then, he only made language and performance-based artwork with emphasis on anti-materialism. So uh, given the marked difference and uh, the contradictions between the class led by Matsuzawa Yutaka and those led by other Bigako teachers, uh, perhaps it is useful to, to describe this class in some details. Uh, so Matsuzawa's class, um, description was set out as below. Uh, as I have been warning since 1961, the ignorance and mistakes of modern civilization have become increasingly evident. In the most sensitive area, a brave change of direction has started. If this misguided civilization can't change direction towards the nature, natural, Within this century, humanity will be extinct by year 2222. We will develop the final art by mixing and changing the following 27 elements in each unit. One, after minimalism, two, creativity, three, cosmos, four, mandala, esoteric, Buddhism, five, eros, thanatos, six, emptiness, nothingness, new, seven, science and pseudo science, eight, future futurology, eschatology, nine, information technology, semantics, 10, psychology, social psychology, 11, hippie, LSD, uh, 12, anarchism, 13, freedom, 14, Utopia, 15, white round basic painting uh, collection book as the base material for creation and experimentation. 16, imaginary museum, 17, brainstorming, 18, world mandala, 19, pornography, 20, braided code, 
21, science fiction. 22, dream recording. 23, secret society. 24, psi experiments. 25, wooden flute. 26, chain poetry. 27, self-control experiment. This workshop has possibility of becoming a lasting commune of art thought or participating in other communes of the same kind. So his class uh, curriculum uh, took up a different subject each week and students were to read about this. Then one of them would make an oral presentation followed by class discussion. The very first exercise the student was asked to carry out was to imagine a white circle in your head. Uh, the next week, they were asked to imagine it a bit bigger. And next week, bigger still. By the end, white circle should be larger than universe. This class may appear contradictory to Bigako's guiding principle. And indeed, Ishii, the director, expressed his bewilderment when confronted with Matsuzawa's purely conceptual work and curriculum. The only concrete products of the class were language-based works, postcards, poems, pamphlets, and books. As discussed before, the post-1968 situation was one of the stagnation and confusion. <coughs> And many young people were searching for an alternative to the rigid social structure altogether. One of the students of Matsuzawa's final art thought workshop of 1973 wrote his motivation to attend the class as follows. In 1968, 1969, when Zenkyoto movement was at its height, I was in the middle of it. I experienced the whole arc of movements rise and eventual fall. Afterward, I only felt a sense of inevitability and apathy. What I learned was that our struggle failed, not because of the police crackdown, but because we could not connect to others, even when we tried using every kind of language. I was shattered by the realization of this loss of language. Having lost the tool of communication, dismantled all the uh, preconception of my existence. So I hold up within myself and wandered aimlessly as if I were in a dream. But I still want to hang on to language. I chose the final art thought class hoping it would be a site where I might find my language. So this sense of communication failure was acutely felt among Zen Kyoto students. And yet the student quoted above states, some still had hopes for finding their own new language for a new kind of communication. So these uh, experiments are done mostly in the beginning of the Bigako, 69 to probably around 70, 70, uh, 73, 75 uh, maybe. Um, but from the beginning, she did not intend Bigako to last very long. He said no more than two or three years. He knew that the fundamental conflict was inevitably arise between the collective organization, which is to say the school, and the autonomous individuals who were its students. Financially, Bigako was never self-supporting and had been heavily subsidized by Gendai Shosha. Moreover, although the first and second year were oversubscribed, the number of students enrolling started to fall noticeably after 1973. The sales of Gendai Shosha books too drastically decreased in the early 1970s after the students of the Zen Kyoto generation 
who are the main leaders of Gendai Shosha books, have left university. Gendai Shosha pulled out of Bigaku operation in 1975. Although the school of the same name still exists uh, in Tokyo, it is now totally a different kind of institution. Some teachers uh, continued until 1980, uh, but like Nakanishi uh, didn't come back. And, and also they, their classes, uh, like Hikohata's classes became more and more like ordinary painting classes. Um, and then more so that the teachers I mentioned here, they, um, their class was terminated by 1980. And after its demise, uh, Bigako has been regarded as a failure and largely forgotten. Although the Bigako experiment was prematurely terminated in 1975, the fundamental questions it raised against the established social and cultural structures, and particularly against the modernism, are still relevant today. And the notion of art education as the tool for change presents an important agency in con confronting the stagnation that Japanese society faces today. And let me just um, introduce some other schools other than the Yakko I have been uh, researching. Um, there are similar experiments of alternative art education happening in various locations in the world in the 1960s. I co-curated anti-academy exhibition in 2013 at the John Hansard Gallery in Southampton, UK, in which uh, there are three schools featured, Bigako from Tokyo, X school or experimental school uh, in Copenhagen, and uh, Intermedia at the University of, I of Iowa from the uh, US. So there's some photographs uh, from the exhibition. Now uh, this is that, that uh, kind of chronological, chron chronology wall I made for Bigako with various materials, books, writings, posters, etc. And this is a small recreation of, of uh, Bigako uh, class, classroom, with tatami mat and those uh, workbenches we recreated, and some, uh, some real uh, drawings and, and paintings by students and a replica of, of the large uh, paintings, collaborative paintings. And this is intermedia part. Uh, intermedia is it's, uh, it's 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 part of the University of Iowa, but it was very independent. It was just run by one German artist uh, who invited many artists from that uh, New York. So Mary Beth Edelson was there, Vita Conti was there, and it was very much performance based. And the one noticeable student there was Anna Mendieta. She uh, started there in Iowa. She was one of the, the uh, she was in the video on the left hand side. And this was the exhibition scene. Um, the, quite lots of videos of the performance remained. And the ex school or experimental school in Copenhagen, this was a bit earlier, it was uh, existed in 1961 and 69. And this is really totally alternative school. And they just squatted some locations in Copenhagen and they started this, this school, but it's, it's very much um, um, free and not very much you know, structured or anything. Uh, Pearl Kirkby was uh, later, he became a famous painter. He was teaching there and several other people of the day um, against the, the Royal Academy education. And this is from that the exhibition scene. There's some photographs of X school and the materials and the things they, they created in the class. And moreover, I collaborated with the Asia Art Archive in Hong Kong 
researching experimental art education and found out that the uh, state art school in Baroda, India, had similar anti-modern handcraft oriented art education program in the 1960s. And I also found uh, material about a short-lived alternative art school in Hong Kong named Soken Experimental School. It was established in 1968 in the aftermath of Hong Kong riot in 1967. Um, so, and then there's several other uh, small initiatives in Hong Kong and in China as well around uh, starting late 60s and continuing 70s and 80s. So alternative art education in Asia is still an underexplored field. Uh, so I would very much like to continue research on this subject, especially in Asia. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for a fascinating and insightful <laughs> your lecture in the distinctive moment of the experimental art education movement in <laughs> Japan. Yeah, actually, in the 1980s, in the peak period of the Minjung art movement, people's art movement in South Korea, mm -hmm. a large number of the artists participated in the building the self-educating art school in the factory and the workshops in many oh. areas. But, mm -hmm. but we don't have any specific the heritage and the documenting the movement. But yeah. I guess I, I can introduce the the achievement of those movements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someday after, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's even in Bigako, when I started researching about a well, little bit more than 10 years ago, everybody mm -hmm. said, oh, no, it's so minor. It's so, you know, it's it, it, it's failed. And and also no. teachers didn't want to talk about it. And there's hardly oh, any really? materials. Yeah, I mean, uh. those later when they get older, then they want to talk uh. about it. But they are very uh. reluctant at the time, especially they uh -huh. are very, uh, I, I think Bigaku was very left wing, and some mm -hmm. teachers didn't want uh, later, you know, they become uh -huh. conservative and didn't want to get associated <laughs> with Bigaku. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I can guess. Yeah. So it takes time. I think it's, 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 mm. it's you know, gradually, uh, when as you research, you get more materials, and some people come up with some mm -hmm. photographs and letters, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, I think I see. Yeah, thank you so much again.